Well, these are some of the most dire animated shorts nominees we've had in a while. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today, we're going to be continuing to focus on Oscar-related content. There are bound to be countless videos talking about and ranking the major Oscar categories, but I wanted to dig a little bit deeper and bring you some content focused on, arguably, the most underappreciated categories, the short films. I was lucky enough to be able to see all of the Oscar-nominated shorts again this year, so I wanted to talk about them as part of a three-part rankography series. So even those who haven't had a chance to watch them, might have an opportunity to at least get a sense of them before the ceremony. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. I've already talked about the documentary and live-action shorts, so that leaves us with our final category, the animated shorts. This is typically the most widely screened of the three categories, and is usually a little bit on the lighter side. The five nominees are Burrow, Genius Loci, If Anything Happens, I Love You, Opera, and Yes People. Since this is a rankography, I'm going to be ranking these shorts, but remember, this is just my ranking, not THE ranking, so be sure to post your own personal ranking of the 2021 animated short film Oscar nominees in the comments below. Coming in at number 5, Genius Loci. This is a French submission and was directed by Adrian Marigo. It's a very abstract work that loosely follows the course of a woman's night as she interacts with her roommate, artists, and strangers. Phew. Okay, so I will say that this is the only short film nominee this year, from any category, that I don't like. Which is pretty good, because usually there's one or more from each category that I dislike. This one is incredibly moody and very, very abstract, which is just not my kind of thing. So if you're somebody who likes abstract animation and visual poems, then you'll likely enjoy this quite a bit more than I did. But this one really just didn't have anything story-wise for me to latch onto, because it doesn't really have a narrative story. There are hints of a plot at times, but it's really all over the place and up to interpretation. I will say, though, that this has some really nice-looking animation at points. Some of it, like I said, gets a little too abstract for my taste, but there are moments that almost look like moving watercolor paintings, and there's also some really cool animation transitions, like papers blowing in the wind turning into playing dogs. Coming in at number 4, Burrow. This is a U.S. submission and was directed by Madeline Sharafian. Part of Pixar's Spark Shorts series, this is a 2D animated film that tells the story of a young rabbit trying to make her dream burrow, while having a series of progressively more embarrassing encounters with her would-be neighbors. I know I'm putting this in the fourth spot, but I still really liked it. It just didn't resonate with me in the way that most Pixar shorts of the past have, so it's a little lower on the list than normal. Out of this year's five nominees, this is the only one that could be considered cute or sweet. There's usually one or two every year, and unsurprisingly, it's almost always a Pixar production. The animation here is really nice, and gives off a very warm and cozy feeling that matches the thematic core of the film. It's a wordless short, so it depends upon the expressions of the characters, as well as other visual cues. There's a decent amount of sweet humor and some funny visual gags, but as is always the case with Pixar, there's a good deal of heart, and a nice lesson about teamwork and neighborly bonds, as well as an interesting lesson in interior design. I think I've got to get a disco ball from my bathroom. Coming in at number 3, Yes People. This is an Icelandic submission and was co-directed by Gisli Darja Haldorsen and Arnar Gunnarsson. It's a CG short that focuses on a snowy day in the life of an eclectic group of neighbors living in an apartment building. This is kind of a weird one. Not nearly as weird as Genius Loci, for instance, but it's this bizarre production that's kind of hard to put your finger on. I was going back and forth between swapping this one and Burrow, but something about this one just stuck out as slightly more interesting to me, even though it doesn't really have a message behind it and it's kind of just this weird, almost throwaway short. The animation's a little strange at first, but it kind of grew on me, because it's this clearly CGI art that's done in a claymation style, with this unique fuzziness to the backgrounds. It's a goofy one for sure, with everybody literally only saying the word yes, or yow, as the case may be. It's got a very strange mix of characters and an odd mix of tones, especially with the humor, but there's something weirdly entertaining about it to me. Coming in at number two, Opera. 
This is a joint South Korean and US submission and was directed by Eric O. Oh. It's a looping non-narrative short that explores societal systems and the cyclical nature of power. This was absolutely mesmerizing. Seriously, I want to just watch this short on a loop because there's so much going on. Initially, it's kind of weird because you don't exactly know what's happening, so you're sort of waiting for something, but once you realize what the short's doing, it just sucks you in. It's like one of those complex cuckoo clocks that has those mechanical looping scenes, but on a huge scale. Like I said, there's so much going on in the short that you could probably watch it a dozen times and still not see everything. So just from an animation standpoint, it's incredibly interesting. But then you add in the messages and themes about society, breakdown of society, class structure, war, transition of power, the cyclical nature of life, it's just a remarkable short. So that means my number one Oscar animated short of 2021 is if Anything Happens, I Love You. It's a US submission and was co-directed by Will McCormick and Michael Govier. This is a wordless 2D animated short that focuses on a married couple struggling to connect with each other. I don't want to say any more than that because I went into the short completely blind and it blew me away with the direction that it went. So if you haven't already read about the short, just go watch it. That being said, I'm going to keep my discussion here spoiler free for you. This is a very impactful short. It starts off a bit slow. It's in black and white, and you get that there's some sort of issue occurring between these two people. But as this film unfolds, and we learn about the reasoning behind their emotional distance from one another, whew, those first couple minutes, I was kind of eh about it. But then there's this moment that introduces color into the film, and it just hits you with this sudden realization of what the story's about. Everything that we already saw now has new context and suddenly takes on a whole different meaning. And then it's got a second one of those moments where you see something and then suddenly realize where it's going, and it's just so hard to watch. I'll admit that this one had me tearing up, the only short to do that to me this year, of any of the categories. It's an emotionally draining experience, but it's an incredible film. Okay, so I know I just went through the five nominees, but every year a few extra animated shorts are added to the end of the reel. So I want to take a little bit of time to quickly talk about and rank this year's three highly commended animated shorts, all of which I think are better than my number five ranked nominee, Genius Loci. Coming in at number three, The Snail and the Whale. This is a UK submission and was co-directed by Max Lang and Daniel Snadden. It's a CG animated short based on Julia Donaldson's 2003 children's book of the same name and tells the story of an adventurous snail who hitches a ride on the tail of a humpback whale in order to see the world. I've got to say, the animation here looked really great. The story's fine too, with some nice moments and lessons, but I just wasn't a fan of the rhyming storybook narration style. Coming in at number two, Kappa e Mahu. This is a US submission and was directed by Hinale Moana Wankalu, Dean Hamer, and Joe Wilson. Narrated in Hawaiian, it tells the legend and history of the stones of Kappa e Mahu. I thought the animation of this was really good, with an almost hand-painted look to it. And I also appreciated the mythology and history lesson behind it, as well as the fact that it was narrated in a traditional Hawaiian language. It's the kind of short that I personally didn't find particularly compelling, but I'm really glad that it exists to tell its story. And coming in at number one, To Gerard. This is another US submission and was directed by Taylor Meacham. It's a CG short by DreamWorks and tells the story of a male sorter who once had dreams of becoming a magician. I thought that this was a really sweet short, and honestly, I liked it better than three of the five official nominees. The animation looked great, but what I really enjoyed about it was its story. It's about inspiring people and passing along interests and passions, and the impact that one small moment, one small gesture can have on a kid. All right, so that's my rankography of the 2021 Oscar nominees for animated short film. Have you had a chance to see these animated shorts? If so, what does your ranking look like? I'd love to see some reasoning for your order, so be sure to post it in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out my rankographies of the documentary and live action shorts and stop back later this week for some more Oscar related content. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this rankography, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this, as well as movie reviews. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.